Really, the Super Sport shouldn't be much of a surprise, as we first posted a leaked photo of the Ducati Super Sport back in July of 2016. The bike was shown to attendees of World Ducati Week with a strict no cameras policy, but unsurprisingly, the mole, if you believe this photo was staged, was able to snap a pic and distribute it to the world via social media. The rumor mill then ignited with possible specs for the Super Sport and, I'll admit, I got caught up, too. The guesswork came to an end in October 2016, as Ducati finally took the official wraps off the Super Sport and Super Sport as it intermit. Beyond being a sporty sport tourer, what we found could arguably be described as the ideal middleweight sport bike, if you're willing to let go of the notion that middleweights have to be 600cc fours. We've already covered the technical details of the Super Sport after its intermit unveiling, but here are the key points. 1. Power is sourced from the 937cc Testastretta 11 Superscripto found in the hypermotored. The 937cc twin delivered 101 horsepower and 67 pounds foot of torque to the wheel when we sampled it in our 2017 Ducati hypermotored review, making it perfect for its intended role in the Super Sport. 2. The engine is mated to a new steel trellis frame. To accommodate, the 937cc V-twin received a new crankcase, cylinder heads, generator cover, and external coils. 3. Base model gets Marzocchi fork, fully adjustable, and Saks rear shock, rebound and preload adjustable. 4. Upgraded S model gets Olin's shock and 48mm tin treated fork, QUIZKSHIFTER for both up and down shifts, optional on base model, and a solo seat cowl. 5. Both versions get Brembo M432 radial mount calipers with a Brembo PR18-19 front master cylinder 6. Both versions get Bosch ABS and 8-level traction control. Crucially, what makes the Super Sport an ideal companion for the street and track is its relatively relaxed ergos. Clip-ons are placed above the top triple clamp, its 31.8-inch seat height is 0.78-inch lower than the Panigale's, and the pegs have been placed in a more comfortable position versus the Panigale as well. Even the windscreen is adjustable to two positions for user comfort. Despite those comfort items, the Super Sport still has the ingredients to slice up a canyon road and set some quick laps. 2. It is a Ducati, after all. With a 24.0 degrees rake, 3.68 inch trail and 58.3 inch wheelbase, compare that to the 1299 Panigale's figures of 24.0 Super Script O. 3.78 inches, and 56.6 inches, respectively. Clearly, the sporting chops are still there. Ducati doesn't categorize the Super Sport as an entry-level Panigale. Instead, Bologna believes the Super Sport and Super Sport S fill a gap in the company's lineup between the Panigale and Multistrada. It's a model with unmistakable sport bike aesthetics that doesn't alienate those who still want to travel some distance on it. Whether you want to call it a sporty bike or a sporty tourer, the question remains, does it work? A streetable sport bike? The simple answer is yes, it absolutely works. But if you're expecting a motorcycle like the past super sports of a decade or more ago, then you should change your expectations. Ducati says the latest iteration of the Super Sport isn't a modern-day interpretation of an old name, but instead a new direction. Ducati's out to prove comfort and sport are not mutually exclusive. Looking at the bike, it's clear to see by the Panigale-inspired nose and elegant bodywork that the Super Sport is ready for a curvy road. Once you're sitting on it, the message of comfort also makes itself known. The narrow seat slash tank junction feels as though you're nearly touching your knees together, which makes it easy to put both feet on the ground. The seat itself is broad and fairly well padded once you scoot back a smidge. Comfort is further illustrated when you reach for the bars, as you're not splayed out over the fuel tank. Instead, the high bars place the rider in a natural posture, with only a slight forward lean. 
Risk pressure is minimal, which is what you want if burning up miles en route to twisty roads is the goal. I was pleasantly surprised, too, when reaching back for the footbags as I would for a Panigali, only to find nothing back there. Relaxing my knees a bit and reaching forward place toes on pegs. On the roads in and around Seville, the super sports beauty and functionality come into view. A less intimidating mileage cruncher compared to the Multistrada, its smaller dimensions are easier to manage and the 937cc Testastrada V-Twin is lively and athletic, producing just the right amount of power to have fun, but not be intimidating, the Goldilocks effect, if you will. Clutch pull is light, though a little slippage is needed to leave the stop. Three ride modes are available, Sport, Touring, Urban, thanks to Ride by Wire technology, with full power available in Sport and Touring. As the name would imply, the latter meters out a gentle delivery of power with the first few degrees of throttle turn, while Sport gives the full dose from the off. Urban, meanwhile, limits the Super Sport to 75 horsepower and really soft power delivery. Touring was initially selected for our street ride, as sport mode on past Ducatis have sometimes been too aggressive for casual riding. Fuel is metered precisely no matter the ride mode, but I found myself wanting for just a touch more power during the initial twist of the wrist in touring mode. Switching to sport halfway through the ride gave a much more immediate burst of power without being too harsh or abrupt. I liked it so much it became my default setting for the rest of the ride. ABS and traction control are tied into each ride mode, but can be adjusted independently from the menu screen. Once above 4000 RPM, the Super Sport really starts to sing. It's belting out something in the region of 101 horsepower and 67 pounds foot to the wheel, based on the 937 in the last hypermotored we tested and Ducati claims 80% of the bike's torque is available from 3000 RPM. This playful character makes the Supersport a riot in the canyons, with readily available propulsion that gently pushes you forward instead of snapping you back, like on the 1299 Panigali. Simply put, you're the one riding the bike, not the other way around. Rowing through the six cogs is easy enough. Ratios are identical to the hypermotored. But according to Giuseppe Caprara, Super Sport project leader, the gears themselves have been strengthened compared to the Hyper to better handle the stress from the QUIZKSHIFTER, which works in both directions and comes standard on the S model. The standard models we rode for the street ride were not equipped with the QUIZKSHIFTER, but it wasn't much of a problem. Clutchless upshifts go on without a hitch, and a slipper clutch helps mask any mistakes made changing down. As fun and athletic as the engine is, the Super Sport is blessed with a chassis and supporting cast that are equally down to party. Its trellis frame is derived from the Monster line, with Marzocchi supplying the fully adjustable fork and Zacks delivering the shock with preload and rebound adjustability. Tires are Pirelli Diablo Rosso 3 measuring 120-70-17 front, 180-55-17 rear, the latter size chosen specifically to highlight the Super Sport's agility, says Caprara. More than just marketing speak, the Super Sport really is a light and agile motorcycle, willing to change direction quickly. The sinuous Spanish roads Ducati chose as part of the ride route brought this into clear focus, as flicking the Super Sport's 463 pounds from side to side was effortless, an attribute no doubt helped by the positioning of the bars, which are wide enough to give just the right amount of leverage to toss the bike around. Once on its side, the chassis-slash-suspension-slash-tire combination feels sure and planted. If you ask me, Ducati nailed it with the Super Sport. Fun, quick, and unintimidating it's a great real-world Ducati for those who want to combine elements of sportiness from the Panigale, approachability of the monster, and touring ability of the Modestrada. That said, the bike isn't without its sore spots. First, as a bike claiming to be flexible enough for touring, the twin 22-liter saddlebags are part of the optional touring pack available from Ducati. 
Other bits of the turn pack include a taller windscreen and heated grips. Speaking of which, buzz from the Super Sport does start to make the hands go numb when you're playing in the upper third of the rev range, common when strafing canyons at a quick clip. Lastly, it seems Ducati missed an obvious opportunity by not equipping the Super Sport with cruise control. Throttle is ride-by-wire anyway. For a bike capable of some light touring, cruise control should be a no-brainer. The new middleweight. The Super Sport may be a road-going motorcycle first and foremost, but Ducati is racing in its blood, so it couldn't just have a single version of the model. Hence the Super Sport is distinguished by its matte white color, matching solo seat cowl, fully adjustable Owen suspension, and Ducati quick shifter DQS. The S version further highlights the sporting chops of the bike without sacrificing its light duty touring potential. To take full advantage of the Super Sport S, a racetrack is needed. Ducati shuttled us to the Circuito Mont Blanco to fully explore the limits. With only two 20-minute sessions at our disposal, it was important to learn the track quickly. Fortunately, the relatively docile Super Sport S made this easy to do, as its modest power doesn't overwhelm the senses, allowing me to spare a few precious brain cells to figure out my lefts from my rights.